Yo, what up? Welcome to another episode of the Oakland Warriors podcast. I'm Patrick, and the Warriors lost to the Lakers in the play-in game. The first ever play-in game in Warriors or Lakers history. And I gotta just say, man, I was pissed. I was so pissed they lost. That game was so close, and it was like in their grasp and it took me a while to settle down afterwards i was like just leave me alone i i need i need a few minutes you know like i was like i just i can't talk about this it's stupid you know but i gotta say man it was good to feel something again (laughs) after a milk toast season of mediocrity where the warriors were just hovering around 500 the whole damn season it was good to like feel that intensity and just get like that emotional rise, like have like your palms sweating. That buzzer beater three that Steph hit at the end of the second quarter, I rewound that thing like 25 times because I was like, man, I just want to absorb this moment and like catch everything about it. I wanted to look at the Warriors bench. I wanted to look at the Lakers defenders. I wanted to see Steph and see whoever he was yelling at and what he was trying to say. I just wanted that experience. And, you know, this game was super worth it. All the old feelings came out. And I mean, sometimes those are good feelings. Sometimes those are bad feelings. But feeling something, now that's human. It was a fun game and everything that the NBA and Adam Silver could have ever wanted from a play-in matchup. I don't know how many people watch the other games, but I guarantee you, you won't see the two biggest names in the NBA face each other in a play-in game again in a very long time. It's going to take a while. And whether that's Steph and LeBron or whomever else supersedes them, this was kind of a perfect storm for the NBA, right? These are two teams that went into the season well, at least went into the draft season expecting to be contenders. But then, of course, Clay's injury. And then the Lakers, they had a series of injuries to LeBron and AD. And then that is what drove both these teams eventually into the seven and eight spots and the play-in. But uh, yeah, getting to it, continuing with some themes from the past couple weeks. Yo, Andrew Wiggins was awesome. He looked serious. He looked intense. And they always say that he goes extra hard at LeBron because of the Kevin Love trade. When LeBron went back to Cleveland, he basically had the Cavs trade the number one pick, which was Andrew Wiggins, to Minnesota for Kevin Love and whatever. I'd always heard that, but me personally, I hadn't seen it, not while he was with the Warriors. And this was the first time I saw it. You know, maybe it was a combination of that and being in a playoff environment. Wiggins just went at it and he started off really, really strong on both ends of the court. He was intense. He was playing hard. He blocked LeBron. He shot over LeBron and he's just nonstop. So if I've been right and he's been like pacing himself, he definitely was putting it all out there on the line. I mean, he had a couple of miscues. There was that one where Steph threw a dime to him underneath the basket and he couldn't grab the ball. He couldn't catch it. But overall, I mean, you got to be happy with how he exerted himself, represented himself, and really, really helped the Warriors get into a position to win. He helped them get that lead. Jordan Poole, even though he missed that three-pointer to tie the game with like 35, 38 seconds left, It is good to have another shit talker on this team besides Draymond. I mean, he was talking smack to Anthony Davis, got that double technical, and he was just talking nonstop. Hey, if if he's on your team, that's awesome. If he's not on your team, he might be kind of annoying. But like I've been saying, it doesn't seem like he's afraid of the moment. He took that shot. He missed it, but he'll take it again. And you want him to take that. You don't want him to be afraid. And it seems like he thrives a little bit in that environment where there's a lot of energy and he brings it. And that one attempted dunk on LeBron, I mean, man, (laughs) again, this bodes well for him in the future. He's only 21 years old. And if he's improved from basically not being very good in his rookie season to being this right now, that is promising for year three once they get everybody back. I like the guy. Juan Toscano-Anderson, I mean, the dude 
just belongs. He showed it again. I wasn't sure if he was going to have jitters, if he was going to have a couple bad plays, turnovers, flubs to start the game, but he drilled a couple threes and he played tough. He boxed out. He did all the little things that you want. I mean, he brings a little bit of Draymond, a little bit of Andre Godala, and a little bit of Matt Barnes. And he could actually probably shoot the three ball better than all of them at this point. And if not, it's trending in that direction. Steph and Dre, they were excellent as usual. It was great to see Draymond like just bring that playoff intensity and finding AD, seeing him battle as an undersized dude against AD at this age. I don't know. You just want to see that he can still do that. Basically, the Warriors, when they had that 13-point lead, they were done in in the third quarter by by turnovers. You know, They couldn't even get shots off and fouls. They started fouling, or at least the refs started calling ticky-tack fouls at the beginning of the third, and that was getting them into a hole. Draymond threw a couple errant passes, trying to thread the needle a lot when the Warriors' offense was kind of getting stuck. And then Steph, his handle has been a little loose in the last few weeks, as well as he's been playing. His handle's been loose, and sometimes I'm like, oh, you know, I'm not paying attention to which hand the ball comes off of or whatever, what he's dribbling with when he loses the ball. But sometimes I'm thinking, hey, is that the effect of the nerve damage from his broken hand last season? I have no idea. It was just a random thought. You can't blame it on the refs. I mean, like the Warriors had the ball and they just coughed it up a bunch and they didn't hit shots when they didn't turn the ball over. The refs were definitely in playoff mode. They were calling some ticky-tack fouls both ways. And then they weren't calling like some uh, some pretty tough physical fouls. So there was frustration on both ends. And again, you can't blame it all on the refs. And so it goes. Kavon Looney, I mean, I mentioned this a few weeks ago, but really quickly again, that dude is a minor medical miracle, right? Like he was done. He was done. And he's playing tough. He had 13 boards in 20 minutes against the likes of Andre Drummond, AD, LeBron, uh, Montrez Harrell. Let's just take a second again, again, take a step back and let's appreciate Kavon Looney. I mean, what the hell? Out of all their centers this year, he's the one that's left. You know, everybody was healthier, younger. I mean, Pascal went out, Wiseman is out, Marquise Chris was out, and then he got traded. That's crazy. That's crazy. Kavon Looney, man. And he did a great job. He was solid as always. And he even hit a couple shots. I just got to say that whole thing about LeBron with like the blurry vision saying he saw three rims and he shot at the middle one. I mean, come on, man. We all know that's not how blurry vision works. That's like cartoons, man. If he thinks he's in Space Jam and like he's got like Tweety Birds and stars buzzing around his head, no one's buying that. When you got blurry vision, like it's all just blurry. If you're seeing three rims, you got a concussion, man. That's his like embellishment of everything, but that's just who LeBron is, how he operates, et cetera, et cetera. Let's all just remember that uh, that cast he had on after the finals against the Warriors. So the Warriors are exactly where we kind of wanted them to be, ideally, right? We wanted them to get into the play-in. We wanted them to get into the playoffs and make some noise and scare some people. So right now they have to go back home, back to Chase Center, and play the Memphis Grizzlies, who beat the Spurs and who are dangerous? I wanted the Spurs personally because, you know, they're more of a known quantity. They're older dudes who are kind of like, you know, they've peaked and they're just more on the downside. Whereas Memphis is a bunch of younger dudes who are on the upswing. And hopefully, hopefully the Warriors can get some rest because Draymond and Steph both played like what, 41 minutes and Andrew Wiggins played 39. I mean, Wiggins is still young, but Steph and Draymond, they got to they gotta rest up quick. I mean, yeah, the Grizzlies played too, but those dudes are like in their early 20s, so they can play all day. This Grizzlies game, I mean, you know, you got to be a little bit concerned because they played the Warriors pretty straight up up until the time Dylan Brooks fouled out. And I'm not saying he's a huge difference maker, but I guarantee you he's going to work his butt off not to foul out this time. On their end, I'm guessing they're thinking, if you don't foul out, we win that game right? They're going to have to find ways to free up Steph and they're going to have to get other guys to continue to contribute. But bottom line is, yo, this season so far at this point is a, is a success for the Warriors. You know what I mean? The only way it's a failure 
is, in my opinion, is if they do lose to the Grizzlies and don't make it to the playoffs. I mean, yes, if they lose, they will end up in the lottery, but those odds are so bad of getting like a a top five pick that it ain't even worth it. I mean, if we talk about experience, look at Wiggins, look at Poole, look at JTA, right? Look how much it seems like they raised their games and they met the challenge. Imagine at least four more games like that. They need that. They need that going forward. That'll be huge for their confidence. It's like when dudes go play with Team USA. They come back after being around like that environment, and they're usually better. They're usually better once you come back from the playoffs. Once you've experienced that, you know that extra level. And it's good for them to see that extra level from Steph and Draymond. So they're like, oh, okay. That's how far I can take it. And that's how far I should take it. But yeah, to me, like maybe not failure, but it would just be kind of a letdown that they ended the season 15 and five, played this tough game against the Lakers. And then if they fizzled out against the Grizzlies, that would kind of suck. But you know, we shall see. It's a pretty quick turnaround after an intense late game. And it's Friday night. So let's see. Anyway, that is the first ever <laughs> play in edition of the Oakland Warriors podcast. Be sure to subscribe wherever you get your podcast. Feel free to hit me up on Twitter at Patrick Epina or at Oakland Warriors. Check us out at OaklandWarriors.com. Be sure to tell your fellow Warrior fan friends to tune in and listen. The Oakland Warriors podcast is produced by National Film Society. That's it. Music in this episode provided by Paper Sun. Special thanks to Paul Amardo for production support. See you next time, and go Dubs. Go Dubs.